Hello everyone, welcome to day two of the Stitch Together project. Um, thank you so much for everyone who joined me yesterday. Um, we had loads of people join in, which was amazing, um, really exciting. Um, I saw some awesome designs, so thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you're tuning in, that's absolutely fine. Um, day two. Um, we're going to be covering mixing your colours and satin stitch. So um, I'll just get started in a second. But just wanted to say um, thank you so, so much again for joining. And please do send in your images of the work you're, you're working on. Um, it's really exciting to see. And I've actually seen some really cool designs. There was someone did an elephant, which was really exciting. Uh, someone did a gingerbread house. We had a couple of hot air balloons and another raw so yeah really love seeing them and it's it's nice to send them in because it also helps give other people inspiration of what they can do um and yeah just what you can do with embroidery so that's great um i will just get on and get started um but before i do one more thing to say um again like yesterday scissors and needles are sharp so please sew responsibly as you go along um and we'll just get going hi carissa on there so hopefully you can see that so as you can see I've done a, f a bit more work on this piece I've added some more back stitch lines to my hot air balloon I was inspired by a few a uh, couple of people who did another hot air balloon and they added lots of different colors to theirs so that is um, my inspiration and as you can see I've got my needle in the corner of my piece of fabric here just like I said before so if you've got any questions about what we covered yesterday, please feel free to send them in because tomorrow I'm going to be doing a ask me a question video. So if you've got questions about the stitches we're covering or if you've just got questions in general about embroidery or my work, please do feel free to send them in because I'm absolutely more than happy to share with you my process and yeah, just help you out wherever I can. So... If you've missed the backstitch video, please feel free to just go back and watch it. And as we go along with this one, I'll um, just pause if you need to take a break and carry on with what you're doing. Um, but I'll just run through everything right now. So yeah, just feel free to pause as you go. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is mixing your colours. Okay, so just like with painting, you can mix coloured thread. Now it's not quite the same with painting. If you add a pink and an orange, or an orange and a white, they're not going to make a completely different colour, but they will mix together quite nicely to create a different effect for your design. So I'm going to teach you how to do that now. So you may remember yesterday we worked with three strands of thread in our needle at once. So just like that we're going to do the same, but we're going to use one colour um, we're going to use one strand of each colour, sorry. So I think I would quite like to mix the green, the blue and the pink together. Now, we're going to be working on a satin stitch and this is a filling in stitch. So this is basically a stitch you use when you've got a little shape that you want to cover with colour. Okay, so I'm going to use the satin stitch on this little shape here on the hot air balloon. If you're working on the PS I made this design, you can use this stitch on the stars. If you're working on the Hello Lovely Person design, you can use this stitch on the petals. And if you're working on the raw design, you can use this stitch on the ears or on the nose. Okay? So, mixing our colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green thread first. I'm going to, just like I did yesterday, I'm going to hold the thread by my thumb and my index finger and I'm going to brush the end of the thread with my finger. So those strands are separating. I'm then going to take one strand of thread and just pull it out from the group, like so. Now I'm going to put that green piece of thread to one side. And then I'm going to repeat this process with the pink. So feel free to pause as we go 
if you're going to separate your thread. Pink. Put that one to one side. And then the blue. Sometimes you have to brush it a little bit just to get them to separate. Okay. So now I've got one strand of green, one strand of blue and one strand of pink. So I'm just going to regroup these and thread my needle with them. Now this is a really good technique to use if you want to have a stripey shape because as you will see these three stitches will lay next to each other and will create a stripey design. So just like yesterday, I'm going to hold my needle by the sharp end. I've wrapped my thread around, pinch it and push it through the eye of the needle. Now threading the needle is difficult, um, but once you get used to it, it's, it's plain sailing from there. But it does take a few goes to get used to it. You can buy needle threaders, which can be helpful, um, but it just takes a little bit of practice. So I'm just going to tie a knot in the end like before. Now, there are many different ways of starting your thread. Yesterday I showed you a way where you simply bring your needle up through the back and you leave your knot on the back of your design. However, if you're doing a really bulky design, sometimes you don't want knots on the back just because it creates too much bulk and the piece can get quite heavy. So I'm going to show you a method where you can actually cut the knot away and still have your thread secure. Now this method is useful if you're um, stitching a shape that's going to be covered because what we're going to do is create three little stitches inside the shape and then we're going to cover it with our stitches when we do the satin stitch. So I'll show you what I mean. Again, feel free to pause as we go just so you can catch up. So what I'm going to do is bring my needle down through the front of the fabric inside the shape that I want to be filled. Now I'm going to create three little stitches inside this shape. It doesn't matter where they are, just as long as they're inside the shape. One, two, and three. Okay, these stitches are called anchoring stitches. So they basically hold the thread in place and you can test them by pulling on the knot. If the knot doesn't move, it's secure enough. If the thread pulls out, then it's not quite secure. I think I'm going to do one more stitch just to make sure that thread is really secure. Okay, that knot is not going anywhere now. So all I need to do is pull on the knot and cut it away. And you can test this by pulling on your thread. And if it doesn't move, then your thread is secure. Now you can see that we've got no bulk at the back and no bulk at the front. And we don't need to worry about these little stitches because we're going to cover them in a minute with our satin stitch. Now before I begin stitching, I'm actually just going to tighten this fabric a bit because I've noticed it's come loose. So it's not quite like the drum head like I mentioned yesterday. So all I'm going to do is gently pull on the edge of the fabric, like so, and then tighten it with the screw. So that's back to where I want it. Now with a satin stitch, what we're going to do is essentially stitch long stitches across the shape. Now you can do these in whichever direction you want, but I always say it makes sense to do them in the direction that makes most sense for the shape you're stitching. So for example, if you were going to stitch 
straight stitches on the lion's ears. I would recommend stitching them in this direction because that follows the natural shape of the lion's ears. If you're going to stitch them like this, it wouldn't be as natural because the lion's hair tends to go upwards like that in the ear. That's completely up to you how you do it. It's not going to look awful if you do it like that. It might look quite cool. But yeah, if you just think about the shape you're working with. So for example, with a petal. Petals sometimes have quite natural veins in them. And they usually go down like this. Or sometimes they go across like this. But very rarely do they go horizontally. <clears throat> so it makes most sense to stitch your stitches in this direction or this direction. Now if you want you can draw on your fabric just before you begin the direction you want your stitches to go and this will just help remind you. So for this piece I think my stitches, I think I want them to go straight so I'm going to draw lines in the shape like so and now I know which direction I want my stitches to go in okay so like I said a satin stitch is a stitch that covers an entire shape now I'm going to get you to start your stitches in the middle of your shape work out to one side come back to the middle and work out again and the reason I stitch like this I sometimes explain it like Imagine if you were writing on a blank piece of paper, you were writing a sentence, oops, just knocked over my lamp, you were writing a sentence and you started at one side and you went all the way to the other and you noticed that your handwriting went up and up and up and up like this. This can be the same with embroidery. So if you start at one side stitching, you sometimes find that your stitches lose their shape and they start to go a bit skew with. So to counteract that, we often start stitching in the middle, work out one way, come back to the middle and work out the other way. And this just helps make sure that your stitches definitely are going in the right direction. So that's what we'll do with this shape. And my needle, oh yeah, it's still threaded, so we're okay. Okay, okay, I'm gonna move some of this stuff because it's getting a bit in the way. You'll find as we go that as you start to use lots of different colours, you start to end up with lots of little bits of thread like this. So it's good just to place them together and just move them to one side so they don't get tangled. Okay, bakey. So what we're going to do is bring our needle up in the middle of the shape on the edge of the line. Okay, just like so. We're going to create one long stitch right over the shape, over the edge of the other side of the line. And we're doing it in the direction of the lines on our shape. Okay, so I'm gonna start by working out to the left. So my next stitch, I'm gonna bring it up right next to the one that I've just done. Again, on the edge of the line, I'm gonna take my needle over to the other side and create one more stitch over the shape, just like so. I'm going to repeat this method following the natural shape of the line. Just like so. And as you can see, because I've mixed my colours, it's starting to look a little bit stripy which is quite a nice effect, I think. Obviously, you don't have to use mixed coloured threads when you're doing this stitch. Um, and you can use mixed coloured thread if you're doing back stitch. It's completely up to you. Now, you might find sometimes when you stitch, you accidentally leave a gap. Like that. If this happens, you can either... Take out the stitch, like I showed you yesterday, 
by just using your needle to pull it out like that or you can simply add a stitch in between like so the trick with this stitch is not to bunch them too close together because otherwise it ends up looking really bulky so for example I'm stitching like this that's quite hard to see but that stitch now lays on top of the previous one so I'm going to take that one out because I don't want it to look too bulky Now as we're going along, if you think I actually want to add something to my design, please feel free. Um, I think over the course of the week I might add some flowers in, or I might add some stars. It's completely up to you. Please make them your own. I've loved seeing what you've been doing already. Really exciting to see the colours you've chosen. Like so. Okay. So I'm nearly done with this side, a couple more stitches, one more, and that side is done. So next all you need to do is jump to the middle again and start your stitches and work them out to the right. Now I'm actually running out of thread, so what I'm going to do is turn my hoop over and weave this bit of thread through the back of my stitches, just like I did yesterday. Okay, just a couple of times to make sure that thread is secure. And then all you need to do is cut that away and get a new piece of thread. So again, just like before, I'm going to use one strand of the pink one strand of the blue and then one strand of the green Regroup the threads. And this is a really good technique to use if you want to shade an image or shade a design. You could start with a light green and then add one strand of a darker green and then add two strands of a darker green. And then eventually as you're stitching, your design will go from light to dark really subtly and it will look really nice. So hold my needle by the sharp end, thread around, pinch it and push it through. Hello to everyone who's joining us. Feel free to pause this video as you go so you can follow everything. And I'm going to show you the three little stitches again. So thread through to the front. I've got my knot there. I'm going to create three little stitches inside this design. One, and they don't have to be neat, they can go in whatever direction you want, just so long as they're inside that shape, so they're covered with our stitches. Pull on the knot, and then cut the knot away. Check to make sure it's secure. Oh, mine's come out. So now we know that that wasn't secure. Happens to the best of us. We'll try again. Sometimes you have to do four stitches just to double check. But it's a good, it's a good way of checking, just pulling on your thread. And if it isn't secure, it does come loose. So it's good to make sure you're absolutely sure. So I'm going to do four stitches this time. I 
If you don't like this method, you're absolutely more than welcome to use the method where you keep your knot on the back. It's just nice to show a couple of different ways of working. Okay, that definitely is secure now. Okay. Needle up next to the last stitch. Over the entire shape. And then back again. And as you can see, I'm following the shape of the balloon. So it's sort of wavy. And I'm making sure that I'm keeping to that wave pattern by stitching to the very edge of the design and I'm following the lines that I've drawn on the shape just to make sure it's nice and neat and it's going in the direction I want it to. And that's all there is to it. So please feel free to carry on stitching. You can fill in as much or as little as you want to. Like I said, tomorrow I'm going to be doing an ask me a question session. So I'll post up a picture later today and you can type in your questions that you want to ask me. And then I'll answer them in a live video tomorrow. And then I thought I'd also cover how to do a cross stitch. So that'd be perfect if you want to do stars on your design or if you just want to add a little bit of detail in the background or detail to part of your design. So I'll finish here, but I'll just weave this through the back of my stitches before I go, like so. That thread is now secure. Snip that bit away. And there we have it. Satin stitch. Stripey satin stitch with mixed colours. Pop my needle in my fabric there. And then we're ready for tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I'll be back tomorrow. And yeah, like I said, please do message me with any questions you've got. I'm more than happy to answer. See you tomorrow.